In 2013, 22,000 people consented to clean toilets for a thousand hours. In 2014, six people agreed to give up their firstborn child. Yet, when PC Pit Stop Optimize offered anyone a thousand dollars, it went unclaimed for four months. What connects these events? I'll give you that one more time. In 2013, 22,000 people consented to clean toilets for a thousand hours. In 2014, six people agreed to give up their firstborn child. Yet, when PC Pit Stop Optimize offered anyone a thousand dollars, it went unclaimed for four months. What connects these events? I think what connects all of these events is when Tom started weekly uploads on his YouTube channel <laughs> in 2014. 2013. Yeah. yeah. Correlation is causation. Don't you know that? Yeah, always, <laughs> always, always, every time. What What is the last thing that you mentioned? The PCP the, thing? The last thing was PC Pit Stop Optimize. Well, that sounds like software to make your PC run smoother or something. It is, yes. Oh, so, okay. And they were offering a thousand... One thousand dollars. Thousand dollars just to use it? He says slightly in the slightly in the voice and cadence of Doctor Evil from Austin Powers. There, I don't know why. <laughs> I just one thousand dollars. Um, is it somewhere where they don't have many computers? Yeah. What did the software company want you to do as part of their promotion for a thousand dollars? Something that no one would do. Give up your firstborn child. Which is it's something worse than that, apparently. Which also, by the way, like, what are the logistics of actually carrying through that transaction? Like, how do you give your child to a software company? Are there <laughs> islands for that? Well, I think we have some <laughs> fourth independent thing that are tying all of these things together, right? Oh. Like, there's some reason underlying, like, the children, the toilets, the software. Yes. Which seem so disconnected. It's like you just picked three random things out of a hat and you're like, Let, let's see if they can find a link. Well, when you have children, you have to do a lot of cleaning of toilets. Um, <laughs> and, and, and giving them up would, would result in fewer toilets to be cleaned. So what It's what almost like follows? an expansion pack for The Sims came out where everybody <laughs> is like doing some Sims tasks in real life, like cleaning their toilets, giving up their child, and they just want more memory on their computer so they can play more games. When you say giving up the child, is it just something like the child's name, naming the child Timothy Pitstop or something? And uh, uh, No, six people literally did agree to give up their firstborn child. Was that followed through? No, but they did agree to it. It's easy to agree to something that, that no one will, will actually do. So one presumes that the $1,000 offer was for something that one would actually have to do if, if, if one accepted the $1,000 check. Mm. But when the kids grow up, like those kids are now 10 years old, are they finding out that their parents <laughs> willingly said that That's they would right, give yeah. them up in exchange for, something, yeah. for some reason? Live reaction video of me telling my kid this. <laughs> you said willingly there. And I think if that ever went to court, I think that could be questionable. They were coerced into this, do you think? Oh. Coerced is also a strong word. Were the toilets actually cleaned, or was that just a promise? Uh, it was just a promise. I, ah. I wouldn't be able to tell you whether that was followed through on or not. Okay. I probably shouldn't use the words followed through in a sentence about toilets, but never mind. <laughs> Is that a thing? I, I don't know that. I'm not familiar with this idiom. Is there a toilet idiom? <laughs> We're not going to explain oh, that joke. We'll, yeah, just, we'll just move on. Oh, we'll no, just... No, I think you just got to let that one go, Adam. <laughs> we'll explain after. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you see, I, I cook on the internet for a living, and like literally any action you could describe in the kitchen has been turned into some kind of euphemism by some, by some society somewhere. And so, like, there's nothing I can say that doesn't make boys on the internet snicker. <laughs> nothing. And apparently, I haven't grown up. Um, <laughs> this is definitely too early, but when I think of these three weird things and what could be going on, for some reason, my mind goes to Mr. Beast. Like, some kind mm. of internet prank where people yeah. are offering to do all of these things for something mm. like that. I think you're close with prank there. Not necessarily internet, but, like, computer-based prank. Certainly. Okay, so if you sell like antivirus software or whatever, and if you were mm -hmm. going to essentially dare someone to do something that they wouldn't want to do with their computer, 
We know that they already are a person with a particular interest in security because that's why they even have anything to do with this company. So it would be to do something insecure with your computer, to like click on some phishing link or something, right? You are getting ever and ever closer yeah. here. Is it a scam? Um, scam is a strong term. I'd actually say, <laughs> I, not necessarily a scam, more like teaching people how to avoid one. Hmm. And I think, huh. Stuart, very early on, you were talking about uh, the software. That might... Oh, my God. They didn't put it in their terms and conditions or something, did they? <laughs> yes, Where... they did. Oh, my God. So if you install PC Pit Stop, you sacrifice your children to Moloch or something. Is that the... the other way round. If you installed PC Pit Stop Optimize and you read the end user license agreement and you emailed the address that was in there, the first person to do that won $1,000. Oh! Wow. wow! And it took four months for someone to notice that. So based on that, wow. why were people giving up their kids? Why were people volunteering to clean toilets? Because they weren't reading the agreements. Yeah. Because they weren't reading the agreements. Those but were... did that teach us anything? We're still not reading the agreements. <laughs> <laughs> the first two of those, by the way, the, the prank ones were Wi-Fi terms and conditions. So oh, the, okay. the firstborn child and the, uh, the thousand hours of community service, that was after someone clicked through just saying, yes, I'll connect. I won't bother agreeing to these. Yes, please just give me the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Back in 2014, uh, Wi-Fi was a lot less secure. So I did once think about doing a video where I set up a Wi-Fi hotspot and hidden in the terms and conditions was the ability to just rewrite anything you saw and steal all your passwords. And then I decided I didn't want the legal responsibility for that <laughs> and thought it was actually just, just a little too <laughs> evil to actually do it. So I'm, I'm glad someone did. But yes, this was Purple, a Wi-Fi provider who uh, got people to sign up to a thousand hours of community service. It's not recorded when they did. Cybersecurity firm F-Secure uh, put what they called a Herod clause in their Wi-Fi conditions in 2014. Uh, and in 2005, PC Pit Stop Optimize uh, hit a clause offering $1,000 if you just emailed someone and it took four months and 3,000 users before anyone noticed.